Hey there, it's Denise from Lumahead.com and this time we're knitting a pretty lacy bookmark. And once again, we're going to be using just a little bit of scrap yarn. In fact, I should be able to get two of them out of this little ball right here because um, you only need like 15 yards. And I'm going to be using my flower loom. You can use your small 24 peg or even your long loom because um, you only need nine pegs. And uh, we're knitting back and forth, in other words, flat. So the shape of the loom is going to have no effect on this project. And you don't need to use a large gauge. You can use a small gauge. In fact, this is just a piece of one of my looms, but it happens to have nine pegs. So it worked perfectly, but I do want to give you a heads up that if you use small gauge, well, your project is going to be a lot smaller, almost half, and a lot more narrow. I added um, some tiny six millimeter beads to my uh, bookmark, but you don't really need to do that. Let me give you what you do need. You do need at least 15 yards of worsted weight yarn, any loom with at least nine pegs, your loom hook and your scissors. Everything else is optional. And if you want a more detailed list, you can go to lumahead.com forward slash lacy bookmarker. All right, without further ado, let's get started using a single strand we're going to secure the yarn to the anchor peg and I'm going to use a simple knot you can use a slip knot if you're more comfortable and then I'm going to take the working yarn between the first and last peg I'm going to go left to right you can go right to left it has no effect on the project and we're going to wrap nine pegs now you'll notice that i have a stitch marker on peg two and eight that's to help me out with the purl stitches and you'll find those stitch markers in my store i'll give you a link in the description now on peg nine we're going to turn around because we're knitting flat and put the working yarn over the existing loop with your hook knit off the bottom loop over the top and you'll have this funky loose stitch right here not to worry pull on the working yarn and then when you knit off peg eight you'll pull on that loop nice and tight and it will tighten the previous loop now you just have to knit off the rest of the pegs as you continue to move forward back towards peg one and i'm using the flat version of the knit stitch you can use the u wrap or even the e wrap whatever feels more comfortable for you once you knit off peg one you'll be done with the cast on and while you're doing that if you haven't already done so go ahead and subscribe and don't forget to click the bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos all right then you're ready to start knitting rows one through four where you're going to knit nine pegs in other words you're just going to knit the row now we're going to turn around to go in the opposite direction because we're knitting flat and you'll notice that I'm using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. In other words, I half wrap the peg and then I knit off. That's only because I'm going left to right and it's more comfortable. You could use flat or you interchangeably. All right, while we're here, I want to say thank you to Carol Maple from Promise Learning ATL. Elise Patron, Penny Pitchard, Kristen Stone, Barbara Ledger, and Mackenzie LeBaron for covering the cost of closed captioning. If you don't see it when you come, just come back later. It may be processing. All right. And again, remember that you have four rows you need to do flat back and forth. And then you're ready for row five where you're going to knit three, e wrap one, knit one, e wrap one, and then knit three. All right. Let's get to it. We're going to start by taking the knot off the anchor peg. You don't need that anymore. Your yarn is now secure. And then you're going to follow that with those three knit stitches. I'm using the U. You can use the flat version. All of those are fine. And then for the E wrap, you're going to get your working yarn and completely wrap the peg and knit off. Then you have another knit stitch. So I knit off and then I'm going to completely wrap the next peg for my e wrap knit stitch which is the ew1 and then i'm going to knit three u wrap knit stitches and now i'm done with row five row six looks a little scary but i'm going to go through everything with you so we're going to knit one purl one knit two together yarn over knit one yarn over knit two together purl one knit one and again it's going to be super easy just 
follow me. All right, we're going to turn around and we're going to do that easy knit one. To purl, you're going to take your working yarn under the existing loop with your hook, scoop up from the top and create a new loop. And then remember that this is where I'm going to be doing my purls where my stitch markers are, okay? You're going to take that uh, loop that's on the peg off the peg and put the new loop on and you pull your working yarn to tighten. And now we're ready to do the knit two together yarn over. So we're bringing that knit, um, that yarn over, we're going to take it off the peg, that loop, and unravel it and then bring it over to where you need to have those two to knit together, right? So you take that loop, you bring it back to that peg and put it over the existing one. Now you have two loops there and then you're gonna take your working yarn and put it over those two loops and you can either knit them both at the same time together or like I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna knit them one at a time. It doesn't matter, either way works fine. And then you're literally going to yarn over the next peg and then you're gonna get to the next one which is where you're going to do the knit one all right now there's such a thing as a slip slip knit but we're not going to use that term we're going to stick with the knit two together so here we're doing another yarn over and then the knit two together so where our yarn over is going to go we take the loop off the peg unravel it and take it to where we need, need the knit two together and put it over that peg Okay, now we have two loops here and we're literally going to yarn over that peg and then do the knit two together. All right, next peg, we're doing the purl right here where my stitch marker is. Remember I said this is where I'm gonna do my um, purl stitches. So you put the yarn under the existing peg, I'm sorry, loop and scoop up, create a new loop take the old one off, put the new one on and pull. And you're going to end with a knit one. And now you're done with row six and row seven is so super easy. You're just going to knit the row. That's it. Knit. Again, you're turning on this row and you're going to knit. I'm using the U-wrap. And when you get here to this little uh, peg right here where you did the yarn over, it feels a little loose. Don't worry about it. Just pull on the next one. This one is even a little more loose. So when you get to that next peg, just pull on the stitch before you knit off. And while you do that, I want to take this moment to say thank you to Lorena Reese for her continued support of this channel. All right, guys, now you're ready for row eight, where you're gonna knit one, purl one, knit five, purl one, knit one. Let's turn around for the opposite direction, and you're going to do that knit one and your purl. You put your yarn under the existing loop, scoop up and create a new loop. Take the old loop off the peg, put the new one on and pull. And then you're gonna do your five knit stitches See, when I'm going in this direction, I prefer to use the flat version, but again, any version is fine other than the E-wrap. And then we're gonna get here where we're doing another uh, purl stitch. So scoop up from the bottom and create a new loop. Take the old one off, put the new one on and pull. And you're gonna end this row with your knit stitch. All right, you're ready for row nine. For this one, you're going to knit three, E-wrap one, knit one, E-wrap one, and knit three. It sounds familiar because you did exactly the same row for row five. So again, we're knitting these three stitches. I'm using the U-wrap. Then you're gonna completely wrap the peg and knit off for your E-wrap, follow with another U-wrap, then completely wrap the peg and knit off for your E-wrap. And this row ends with three knit stitches once you're done with that last one you're ready for rows 10 through 45 and this time you're going to repeat rows 6 through 9 those four rows you're going to repeat them nine times for those of you that this is a little bit confusing let me show you here are those nine repeats so your first one you're going to knit row six seven, eight, and nine. And then you're gonna do exactly that until you have nine repeats. When you're done, you're going to knit rows 46 through 49, which are four rows as well 
of just knit stitches so you're basically knitting four rows just like you did at the beginning of nine stitches and then when you're done you're ready for the cast off you're going to finish your project by doing a basic bind off of seven pegs and let me show you why it's just seven pegs you're going to take peg one and take the loop off that peg and you're going to move it over to peg two we're going to reduce the number of pegs that you're binding off so you move it to peg two and then you knit off you're then going to take the very last loop, which is on peg 9, and you're going to take it off the peg and move it over to peg 8. Go ahead and tighten that up so you don't get a loose um, bind off, and you're going to knit off peg 8. You now have only 7 pegs. You see that? And now we're ready to do the basic bind off of these seven pegs. So take the working yarn over to the next peg and knit off and then take the loop off that peg and bring it over to peg eight. Now you have two loops on peg eight. You're going to tighten that stitch and knit off that peg and then take the loop off the peg and bring it over to the empty peg. Now you have only six, I'm sorry, now you only have five pegs with stitches. All right, take your working yarn to the next peg and knit off and then tighten and bring that loop over to the next peg and tighten your stitch and then knit off. And then you're gonna take that loop off the peg and bring it over to the empty peg and you can see the pattern right we now take the working yarn over to the next peg and you're going to knit off that peg and try to keep your your stitches tight so always pulling on your working yarn after every move every time you do something go ahead and pull on that working yarn now knit off your peg and take that loop over and put it on the empty peg and again you tighten all right bring the stitch over I'm sorry the working yarn knit off and now bring it over knit off and bring it back to the empty peg and you're going to continue to do this until you've knit off all of your pegs here's the last two that you're going to um, work on always you're working on two pegs so you knit off peg two take the loop bring it over to peg three and you're going to uh, knit off that peg and that's the last one that you're going to knit off keep it nice and tight and now I'm going to take that loop off the peg now you can finish this in a multitude of ways um, you can just pull on it uh, to, to end it but I don't do that so I'm gonna work on this a little bit I'm gonna hold on to this loop and you see that little opening there don't panic about it we're gonna close it up it's pretty easy and if you want to secure your work you can always put um, a little clip on it okay but look how nice and neat your edge looks and um, and this little opening right there we're gonna fix that so hold on tight to it and then um, we're going to go ahead and cut the working yarn now, okay? Make sure you leave yourself a nice uh, long tail that you can work with, okay? Because we need to do some, uh, I would say like a little bit of a repair to that opening. So hold on to that. And like I said, you can always put a clip on. All right, let's get to the next section. Once you take it off the loom and you're looking at it, you might feel it looks wider and funky and shorter. It's because you need to stretch your stitches. So grabbing from your edges, go ahead and pull on everything. Make sure your eyelets are nice and pulled and stretched and your edges look good. Now, this end right here, which is your cast on end, looks awful we're gonna fix it don't panic you're gonna start on this end over here and um, you'll see that it's gonna work out we just have to go slowly okay and I want to make sure that you know not to start here with this side that's where folks go wrong that's not where you start you start on the other end okay and you might find that you have a really long one right here on the edge 
pull that one from behind like this you see right there and then once you get that one kind of tightened up right here you see it right there I'm doing it from behind look you see where it's at then I'm pulling from the front so first I pull from behind then I pull from the front now I'm only going to pull those loose stitches in the front you see that right there the key to this is to go slowly and let the project when you pull one string tell you where the next one is see right here you can see where I came from and it shows you where to go next if you need to do a smaller version of this project to practice on getting this uh, cast on tightened I recommend that you do this this is such a key part to making this project work out so consider if necessary um, doing this on a smaller scale all right and then see here this is my last part right here and I think people really panic here when they get to the end but you can see um, what I'm doing right you see right there where if you go too fast you can actually lock it up and you don't want to do that and I'm sorry that's a bit blurry that's unfortunately there's nothing I can do it's it's done um, but like I said this is a part where you're gonna want to go slowly so you don't tighten up your cast on and then you can't fix it all right but as you can see look at how much better this project looks because we tightened up uh, the cast on stitches so this is key to making your project look nice all right and once you've done that now you're ready to go to the next part which is where I'm going to steam block so I got um, a towel and if you don't have a steam iron don't worry just get a sprayer and spray it and then put your iron on low on low temperature and you can go ahead this is cotton yarn is what I'm using and it actually works fine you can actually put your iron on it so just wet the project first with like um, some kind of sprayer or even just sprinkle some water on it and then you can lightly iron once you're done we're ready to weave in the end so we're gonna get a crochet hook um, or you can use a needle to weave in your ends and remember that little edge that had a little bit of an opening well this is where I'm closing it alright so you can fix this with your crochet hook or you can use a needle to weave in the ends and close in whatever opening or error or whatever you want to fix this is a good time to do it you do it with that extra little bit of the working yarn that you have left over and um, and a crochet hook or again you don't have to use a crochet hook for this section you can also weave in your ends with a needle or a weave in um, a tool like one from say the hook nook and by the way if you like these scissors they are in my store and I'll put a link in the description all right look at this now just do it on the other side cool now we're ready to add the beads and what I did was make sure that I had um, beads that were going to be small enough but show up and that I had some matching yarn uh, because the cotton doesn't work well in this even if you unravel it and I got a needle that I made sure would actually go through my beads this is key because if the needle can't go through you can't sew it on so I am putting it in the middle and I'm using um, the yarn so I do have a little knot on my um, thread right after I thread my needle and then I basically just um, make sure that my thread is going to stay in. And so I feed the, the little bead through the, through the thread. I'm sorry. And then um, come back out. And I one thing I try to make sure is that when I'm sewing on the back part that um, it's not going to show up. So I am coming through basically uh, in 
in through the threads. This is a four ply yarn. So I try to get in between it and uh, and I try to sew at least three to four times. So you can see here that you don't see the thread, right? Because I'm, I'm, I am sewing under the bead uh, but not on truly on the back side and like I said I try to go through the threads the mo the different plies on the yarn and as you can see I'm continuing with that same uh, thread I'm not uh, cutting off for each bead so I'm able to put about three to four beads uh, with one round of of thread then you have to thread again and keep going but as you can see you don't see any of the of the um, thread on the back part of the project I thought that was kind of important right to me <laughs> at least and there you go that's the project I hope you like it if you did make sure to share the video because that helps me a lot Leave your comments and your suggestions and all your feedback in the comment because that helps everybody. Alright guys, thank you so much. I hope you'll come back and loom with me again.